so I want 2.5% now. Yeah. Love your 2.5%. Yeah. We're all getting percentage if you get this stuff. I don't think he's going to get it. He's going to get it. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Price to Sell podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Matthew Campoli. And today we have another amazing show for you. We have an incredible guest for you guys. We have Miss Anna Oliver. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure. We've been meaning to get this going for a while, so it's good to actually. Yes, do it's this. good to be here. Thank and you. You're welcome. And this is actually our uh, finale for this season. So you saved the best for last. We did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> we did. So I want um, so give everyone a little brief uh, bio as to who you are, who you work with. So we'll my name is there. Anna Oliver. I'm a senior vice president at Sotheby's International Realty Canada. I've been licensed for just over 18 years now. And I started my career in 2003 in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and I sold there for just about six years. I had a great run, and I decided that I would try it out in Toronto. So I moved here in 2008, and that's when reality hit. Yes. It took six great months. Year. Took six months for my license to get transferred, and the recession hit. So my income dropped 90 percent that year. Wow and didn't know anybody, recession hit, and here I was. So it's been an interesting run. I love Toronto. I love everything that the city has to offer and still still discovering and still learning. 18 years, it's one of the best career choices. Well, the only major career choice I've ever made. So it's been a great, great run, so. That's amazing. And just curious, what was the price point in Nova Scotia? The average price point in Nova Scotia when I was selling was about two hundred fifty thousand. Crazy! I bought my first home for a hundred and thirty thousand, and it was three thousand square feet. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. The market has really turned around in Halifax, so it was a bit of an eye opener when I moved to Toronto. Yeah. And what's your price point now? My average price point it varies. It yeah. depends because I'm a generalist, and a lot of my clients are in different price points. So. You know, starter homes as low as 300. Well, I don't even know if you can buy anything Not for 300. Yeah. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> yeah, can't even buy anything for 300, but I've done everything from as, I think my lowest, my in Halifax, the least expensive place I sold was $1,200. Holy cow, that, that exists? Yeah. A house. It was a house. Holy cow. Yeah, and I've gone uh, up into the luxury market as well. So I've mm -hmm. been very successful, but again, because it's my client, so I'll go anywhere, so. Yeah, yeah. amazing, amazing. Um, prior to you coming, here we, we chat on the phone yes i really like your story before real estate thank you um it's cool maybe just because i'm just a fanatic when it comes to this kind of stuff right but, um i'd love for you to share your experience pre-real estate pre-real estate okay we're going back yes yes i'd love to for you to share that so pre-real estate as i mentioned on the phone earlier i come from a long line of military and military service family so my parents both met in the air force in 1958 oh, wow. And my brother, my three sisters all joined or served in the military. And most of my in-laws are all military. So when I graduated, there was a bit of an obligation uh, and an interest in serving my country. So I did a six month tour in Bosnia and I worked with the infantry and I was with the guys, well, and the, and the women too, for six months in Bosnia. It's crazy. It was, it was a great learning experience. It definitely was an eye opener. Yeah. It was a great opportunity to see what our military offers and seeing kind of behind the scenes what was happening. Cause my father deployed quite a bit when I was a child also. Yeah. And a lot of my clients over the years have been military or, or government. Yeah. So, so it was interesting. So yeah, Bosnia definitely toughened me up. I can imagine. Yes. So I picture a compound. We were surrounded by uh, barbed wire and landmines. And we were basically on the compound and we're, yeah, we're there to support the local communities and, uh, and our, the big mission for the military at that point was uh, stabilization after the war, to, after the war destroyed Bosnia and landmines. So it was a landmine. So I actually had to do landmine awareness training before, uh, I went to Bosnia. So. Are we like, are we like um, sweeping for mines and stuff? Were you guys disarming no, and stuff like were, that? Yeah, the, the guys and the women that uh, I was there That's to crazy. work with, they were that was their primary role. So I actually had to do landmine awareness training. Yeah. And one of the other cool things I got to do is a gas chamber and like if we were ever under attack. So I had a flak helmet and yeah, so the, the, the training leading up to it was yeah. definitely an eye-opening experience. Yeah. And uh, I think it definitely helped me in terms of resilience and appreciating what we have as a country and seeing what our men and women do for our country as well. So mm -hmm. it gives you a different aspect because we're, we're very fortunate here. 
Definitely. And I think it's a perspective a lot of people just forget about, you know, or, or, or lack yes. um, that gratitude. Just like we're able to live such great lives here because of past history and what we've been through. Um, and you probably really do well in bidding wars, eh? Uh, it depends. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it uh, definitely, again, because of th that experience, I think it's given me a different uh, breadth of knowledge that, that I bring to the table. And again, you appreciate kind of what people are going through, like when they're purchasing a home or selling their home, it's the most stressful time in their lives. Yeah. And I have such a protective role and aspect that I take with them. So, yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. It is kind so, of cool. It's kind of cool. Very cool. Here. But I'm I'm nerding out a bit right now. <laughs> but uh, let's uh, let's get into so Sotheby's, so the broker you work for the company. Yes, yes. Um, you guys have a very very good uh, prestigious kind of reputation. Yes. And not just any agent can work there. That's correct. So um, so that in itself is is a really big. I, it, and me as another realtor. Yes. Um, I respect it fully. Thank so you. Thank for those who don't know about. Uh, Sotheby's you want to yes. let everyone know so Sotheby's International Realty Canada they're fairly they're a smaller uh, well, actually we're gaining more market share and Sotheby's is known for luxury service mm -hmm. and I find with the brand I've been very fortunate to work with such a great company and the support that we get in terms of the marketing the caliber and I'm very very fortunate I was a bit intimidated when I first started there they recruited me in 2012 oh yeah almost nine years and I've been very I've been working with some of the best realtors so it definitely I've your game and yeah. I love the consistency of the brand however some people think they're a bit intimidated by the brand as well and what my my role and kind of my mission is to to really emphasize that Sotheby's is not just a price point because I've actually had people say to me like oh I only have a nine hundred thousand dollar condo or four hundred or whatever is that something Sotheby's like you can represent and like absolutely Sotheby's is about luxury service mm -hmm. not a price point yes. so you, you can still get all that amazing exposure locally internationally with me or with any of the other agents but um it's a it's a level of service it's more of like a concierge level service yes and we get to see some really really great homes and our global networking is phenomenal like the the caliber i've been fortunate to go to some of our global networking events and just to see kind of what sotheby's offers so i've been very very fortunate yeah yeah it's a whole like a whole other level it is and um you guys definitely give off that uh like I've, I've mentioned before every time i see a listing with you know a busy agent it's like okay I'm, I'm about to deal with someone who really knows their shit. yes you yes know? yes so it's um great they've done a great job in the building the brand and the people yes. around it so and you're starting to see more sotheby signs come up because they've mm -hmm. really uh, they've been more not i don't want to say aggressive with the recruiting but i think more people are kind of gravitating towards it yeah. and i always compare brokerages just like cars you know all brokerages kind of do the same thing but when when you see like a BMW, you're like, oh, that's nice. But the Sotheby's is like the Bentley. You see a yeah. Bentley drive by or you mm -hmm. see something and it has that little cachet to it. Definitely. And I've been, again, very fortunate to work there. Yeah. No, it's awesome. That's awesome. Um, okay. So I want to get into all things luxury with you and yes. everything. But before, I'd like to talk about what recently happened over TikTok yes. and everything. And just yes. um, <laughs> try some light into the situation because... Right. I don't think um, the feedback and what's ha kind of happened is, is fair to you at all. Thank you. And I think that you deserve to tell your side of what happened. Okay. And uh, yeah, so what, what exactly went down? So as some people who follow me on Instagram, and I've mentioned this before, like when I started in real estate, the way to self-promote was postcards or word of mouth. And if people didn't like your branding, they just kind of, you know, throw out your postcard and they'd laugh about you behind your back or whatever. And social media has added this whole other element in terms of production and trends and TikTok and dancing and all this other yeah. stuff. And as a realtor, because we're constantly trying to evolve and promote ourselves and our properties, you have to stay on top of it. And I'm the first to admit, you know, it's not an exact science. You have to try things. Some things work, some things don't work. And what I've really liked doing in the last little while is promoting my, my videos in terms of education, mentorship, neighborhoods, everything. So when I film for time purposes, the other thing too to remember is I'm not a professional broadcaster. I'm not a professional. So I'm still doing deals. I'm still representing my clients. And I find this whole other element is added, like, I don't want to say distraction, but it's it a lot of work. It is a lot of work. To and keep up. 
And people don't get that. They don't. No. So what I've done is I've always tried to recognize my strengths and delegate or bring in people that can help me with the production or the the hashtags or the trends. Of course. And because there's so many different platforms, so what I do is I hire my film crew and production and everything. We film one day. So sometimes I'll do anywhere from eight to ten videos in one day. Yeah, I do the same. And it's just it's time it's it's more efficient. Way more. And you know, it takes a full day of the prep and the the hair, the makeup. Like mm -hmm. I don't wake up looking like this. Well, yeah. Maybe, but you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a production. So what I what happened with this video is I wanted to do um, feature different neighborhoods and different kind of ideas for like, hey, if you're starting a family, here are my top three neighborhoods for this, or here are top three neighborhoods if you're single. So that day in particular, we were talking about three, uh, my three top picks for investment properties, three top picks for if you're single, three top picks if you're starting a family. And I always think of how I felt when I first moved to Toronto. I'm not familiar with neighborhoods. Yep. And Toronto is really a city of 40 small little communities. That's very true, very different. Very different exactly. and every community offers its own little <laughs> kind of character and flair. So that day we decided to do a batch of like neighborhood videos on top of other uh, neighborhoods that I have listings in. So we decided to do, so we, my famous King West one, mm -hmm. and it was um, just to highlight King West. And I've sold, I used to work at Private Service Realty, PSR. I've sold quite a bit in King West. And my producer was um, in, the, in the room with me and he had just bought in King West and we're super excited. And what some people don't realize is sometimes it takes me five, six, seven, sometimes 10 takes. Mm -hmm and depending how it gets edited. So that one, to sum it up, um, we're having some fun. And I said, well, obviously, King West is one of my favorite neighborhoods because he just bought there. Yeah. And we're really excited. And, you know, we're celebrating. Yeah. It was excited. He was excited about his condo purchase. So my batch of videos goes off. So we did King West. We did Yorkville. We did the beaches. We did Leslieville. We did all, like all kinds of different yeah. neighborhoods. So my editor, who doesn't live in Toronto, received this whole day of footage of all these different neighborhoods. So when it was edited, it was me talking about King West, but it was edited with me in Yorkville. Yes. And my uh, my team, you know, most of the time, like I, I'm so hands off with social media and I'm the first to admit it. Like, you know, I have I have people who do it for me yeah. because I'm busy representing course, clients. That, I'm on the road. That's a smart thing to do. And it takes me maybe 10 hours for maybe somebody younger who's a little bit more tech savvy. So the video that uh, became, <clears throat> sort of infamous or yeah. famous, it depends how you look at it. It was posted on a Friday, I was out of town, and I, I have people who manage my account for me. And I'll be the first to admit, like, you know, I probably should have been more hands-on. And the video got posted and it went viral. It was tagged with a Drake song. I don't even know what Drake song it was, but it was a popular one. Yeah. And it, uh, it had an edited version of me saying, obviously King West is my favorite. And I was talking mm -hmm. about Laval and it was a B cut. And yeah. the B-roll that was associated was me kind of having fun in Yorkville. Yes, yes. And people went nuts. Yeah. And one thing I love about Toronto and people who live in Toronto is they're so passionate about their neighborhoods. And what I love too is that everybody's entitled to their opinion. Mm -hmm. So I just mentioned places that, you know, I talked about Laval, I talked about Belfast Love, I talked about uh, Gusto, I talked about all kinds of, but it was only edited Laval. So I was oh, I see. chastised for Laval, 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 yeah. it was how it was edited. And then it was me, my B-roll, having fun mm -hmm. in Yorkville. Yeah. So people came at me for saying King West was gr like great. Some people said it was the worst neighborhood. It really brought out like kind of a polarizing opinion. What I didn't realize is that it had gone viral. I was out of town and it, somebody picked it up on Twitter and then it went viral there. And then BlogTO picked it up. And, and now it's came over. <laughs> then it was game over because they can write whatever headline they want and it's done that Absolutely. is like that is like the only way things are going to go and you know what like the the <clears> girl <throat> who wrote the article um i think it, i was quoted i think the title was uh realtor being roasted for cringe worthy king west video and i still didn't know what what it was really about because i thought it was just people being passionate about king west or not yeah and my friend called me from portugal and he oh, said well. do yourself a favor don't read the comments. I said, I have no idea what you're talking about yeah. because I have this team, right? Mm -hmm. So then um, I did a follow-up video the next day. I'm like, hey, like, thanks so much. Like, I love all your feedback. You know, if you want me to focus on a different neighborhood, let me know. Well, meanwhile, 
I didn't realize the, what had gone out production wise. So they were talking about me on uh, 1010 on the rush. I called in the show and then, but then the bullying happened uh -huh. and I had the most obscene messages sent to me personally. Yeah. Uh, people came at me for my looks, how I speak. Um, obviously I have no clue what I'm talking about. Yeah. And because I've been selling for so long, like I've sold in every neighborhood in Toronto. I go yeah. where my clients want. Of course. And so then when I, when the dust settled and I actually got to take a look at it, I'm like, well, yeah, I look stupid because here I am having fun in Yorkville with B roll yeah. and it was a production thing, but I own it. Like I should have, should have been a little bit more hands-on. Mm -hmm. And then the Toronto Star did a nice article on, um, you know, bullying and how, um, how the messages, like the messages were obscene Yeah. and anybody who knows me, like I, you know, I'm, I'm, tr I'm doing the best I can. And just like the girl who wrote the article, I forget her name, you know, she's doing her job. Sure. She's there to promote, get readership up. I'm out there trying to pr promote neighborhoods and communities. Mm -hmm. So we're all doing, like, I, I like to think that it was her just doing her job. I was just doing mine. And, you know, and again, I love how passionate it's yeah. kind of like, you know, there's a rivalry between in Chicago, like with the Cubs and the White Sox. Well, here it's like f 416 and 905. Yeah. And there's a, like, and I love seeing kind of the passion, but you know, I could have done without the meanness. I think I could have uh, done uh, without the, the death threats and hoping. You got like, death threats too, eh? Yeah, yeah wow. I had uh, death threats. I had people saying, like I said, the most obscene, not about how I, like I said, like how I look, my safety, yeah. uh, weird messages. But one thing I do really want to thank is a lot of uh, clients um, supported me publicly Publicly, and I got a lot of love from other realtors, you know, because sure. again, we're just out there. We get it. Well, some do. Yeah. yeah. And, and I can laugh at myself. I can be silly and everything. So that's sort of what happened. And I was uh, kind of surprised yeah. to see the, uh, the level of passion and uh, yeah, but it just shows that, you know, there's that fine line of promoting. And I think some people think it's a bit tacky, some people, but again, we got to try things and we have to be bold and sometimes things work. Like I have some videos that I get great response and I have other ones where people are like, eh, I kind of missed the mark. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Cause we learn and we have to constantly grow. So exactly. Yeah, definitely. And it's just, it's a shame cause you know, people who didn't know you prior, it's the first time they're seeing you yeah. and little do they know like you're an extremely high producing agent. Yes. You know, you work for an amazing brand, you sell, um, it's a very high quality homes. You've been in the business 18 years and they're probably comparing you to like, you know, maybe someone who just entered the business, trying to talk like they know. Possibly. And, and, that's... and little do they know, like you, sorry to cut you off, but they don't even know that um, because of the, the, the level and, and what, you, what you have on your plate, it's very hard. And I know it myself, because I, I have a hard time doing the same, but for you to manage every little thing, uh, what's happening, especially on the socials and the editing and all that stuff. So like you said, you're working on the biggest deal of your life at the time. Yeah and you have your team who you've confided all your trust into and they just made a mistake and unfortunately it blew up and it gave it still gives no people no right to say all that kind of stuff to you no no they just you know i it just it's it's, it's a hey, shame I can it's take sad it. yeah good for you yeah i can take yeah, it i don't and know like, how i would react to that honestly i would be like well, at home like what, don't read the comments yeah. just don't read the comments yeah. and i think too what i really <laughs> liked is some people that i like some agents that i've done deals with in the past like reached out to me personally and you know, hey, like we got your back, keep doing it and everything. I got great support from Sotheby's. And again, like I think the girl who wrote, um, like actually at the bottom of her article, it was, um, you know, she said, you know, check, check out Anna's, her other videos are actually quite informative. But the other thing that happened that made the video where I looked a little bit, probably maybe not as experienced was the, the auto text that was coming up. And I am a fast talker. So when I was saying Laval, it was showing up Laval. Yes. And I, so it was auto. And again, I didn't know that. And I'm like, well, you know, pe like, come, come on people. Like, let's have a bit of a sense of humor here. Like yeah. we all know what I was talking about, you know, Laval, Laval or Aretto, Aretta, Gusto, Gusto. Like yeah. we all know anybody who's been in King West, we know what I was talking exactly. about. And, and again, like, because every neighborhood offers so many different things, they're 30 second videos they're I can't talk about every single business as much as I'd like to yeah. so that's why I reached out I said hey anybody else wants a neighborhood video we want to support some small local business hit me up you know if you want me to take some speech lessons I'm happy to yeah. if I didn't pronounce it but let's have a sense of humor yeah, no, about that's it good. you play with it like that that's yeah. cool like and that's the best way and like that's one thing over the last 18 years like you have to be able to roll with it and you have to be able to have a sense of humor mm -hmm. and laugh at yourself like you know I'm just fumbling around yeah and trying to have some fun and 
and you know and again to get some maybe people talking about in different neighborhoods or or something and again like i said like the passion that people had about why king west was horrible or why this or if but even in my defense if lavelle was my favorite place who cares it's my yeah, opinion yeah, exactly. or, or if exactly. i like going to the keg or two cats yeah. which i do you know what i mean like it's mm -hmm. we're all entitled to our opinion and it's just like you know we gotta let we gotta lighten up a bit 100 percent agree and laugh at ourselves too yeah and that's one thing I have. A, I'm very lucky because I do have such a strong personality and a sense of humor. But I'll, like, I won't like it, it hurt. Like when people were reaching out to me on my cell phone and saying those horrible things, like I'm a hard worker. And they're calling you? Calling me, that's texting insane. me. That's that's the next level. Yeah. You shouldn't even like. Like hoping that I end up I, in a ditch. Like People should not stoop that to that level. No, and you know what? They yeah. Maybe they have other problems. And I'm that just... That is a thing. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I'm sympathetic. And hey, if it maybe made them laugh or I was the, the butt of a joke, but it maybe like lightened up their day, I have at it, but... Good for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, like big respects for taking the high road on Thank that. You. Like I said, Thank I you. don't even know what I would do in that situation yeah. because, you know, uh, your image is everything. And for it to yes. be just taken away from you like that for the split second, but... And just, I'm happy that you're here and able Thank to. Thank you. Yes, yes. I'm glad you still wanted me here. Yeah. I don't know oh, after the TikTok. No, no, uh, yeah. I, you don't want me to do a dance or anything. I hope we can do a little dance after. <laughs> do a little but dance. Yeah, like and like anybody like when we're filming and stuff. Like and again, I'm not a professional, so all I'm doing is the best I can. Yeah. And you know, and we have fun in between takes. And some days you're on. And other days, it's like I'm having a hard time, like, you know, describing a kitchen for the 10th time or being excited. Yeah. And you have to bring a certain level of energy. My phone's ringing. My clients don't want the, dis they want, like, there's that fine line too. They want you to promote it. But at the same time, they want to know that I'm on top of the negotiation, the follow-up, the, the logistics. And I'm very hands-on. Like, I usually, I'm considered like more of a high volume and I'm very hands-on with all of them. So I have trades and contractors and movers and, oh, okay, let's talk about that kitchen and let's get excited yeah. about this. And, and that day that we were filming, <clears throat> it was 40, deg 40 degrees and we're having fun. So hopefully there's some positive that came, came out of it, but it definitely made me recognize that I need to be more hands-on, especially with the delegation. Mm -hmm. And if your name's going out there, you have to make sure that it represent you fully. So, and yeah. properly. Well, your socials, are fantastic thank you, you do make a lot it's, of amazing educational videos thank and you. you add a lot of value so thank you unfortunately people just focused on the one little thing and but that's okay. Uh, that's okay but the real Anna Oliver is amazing and I'm happy thank you're you. here again yes and uh that that video we we all laugh about it one day you're already laughing about I'm, it so. I was laughing about it the yeah. day after amazing. and again because like I still didn't know why people were so upset about it and one like two days later, again like the dust settled, and I looked. I'm like, oh okay, like yeah, I do look like I do look clueless. And yeah. I had this over the top outfit because we were doing a photo shoot in Yorkville, mm -hmm. and I was having fun. And uh, yeah, so the guys on uh, uh, on the rush were good, and uh, Toronto uh, the Toronto Star was great too. So anyways. Well, price to sell approved as well. Thank you. You're very Thank welcome. You. You're yes. Very welcome. So I'd love to get into now the real Anna and yes. everything that you do amazingly in. Thank you. Um, especially the luxury because I'm personally um, curious as to how you do so well in that department. Yep. I haven't really hit some extreme luxury sales myself. So even just as uh, someone that wants to get educated, I'm, I'm all here for it. Let's talk about being a luxury agent and dealing with that type of clientele and, right. and a higher price point. It's a completely different ballgame. It is a different ballgame. Right? And, and one thing to remind people, I'm not from Toronto. Mm -hmm. And when I started here, I knew nobody. Like, absolutely. I would, what I would do when I was waiting for my license to come in, to be like, it was a six month process. Yeah. So I, I decided, I was so determined that if somebody were to ever call me, I would know Toronto like the back of my hand. So I'd pick different neighborhoods and I'd walk them and I'd get to know them. And I did a little stint in commercial real estate. So I worked at Cushman and Wakefield uh, office leasing because I figured if, if I was going to make the shift to a different market, now is the time. And I, a lot of the commercial guys were referring me some of their clients. So names didn't really mean anything. And next thing I know, I'm showing these amazing, like, like over the top places mm -hmm. and I'm from a small town I'm from you know I grew up in Kingston Ontario I grew up yeah. at the military college for goodness sake it's the most gated community you can think of and now I have this opportunity and I remember some of these places I pinched myself yeah like, 
I remember like elevators opening up into your penthouse and like, mm -hmm. wow. But I think what made it different is that it didn't matter what their price point was. All of my clients are treated with the same amount of attention because yes. I'm very, very hands-on and it didn't matter. <clears throat> so I think that maybe have helped me in some ways where I kind of Jump, like I jumped into it yeah and the other thing is names and names didn't mean anything so mm -hmm. somebody somebody who may have been pretty high profile I didn't recognize the name so it was almost like ignorance kind of helped me okay yeah. and because I didn't know and a lot of the, my higher end clients you know they're non-disclosure agreements there's privacy agreements there's other considerations I'm not necessarily dealing with the the end user I'm dealing with say their agent or their manager and it's just Anna like I'm mm -hmm. just like this is just who I am and I'm excited and thrilled and the other thing is I made a very uh, early decision in my career that this was going to be it so I've dedicated a lot and you know my personal life has suffered to some aspect like I'm not married um, you know real I'm a, I'm a deal junkie I'm yeah. a real estate junkie I, get I, that. I live breathe sleep real estate yeah. so I was able to give an extra level of service of course and without being maybe intimidated or starstruck because I didn't know who these people were. Yeah. So that helped. And then the terms like with, because I started in a slower market, I, I was used to longer market times. Like the average um, sale time in Nova Scotia was, you know, sometimes six months to a year. Holy. So you develop that skill. And I yeah. think some of the realtors that I've met, they need to go through the rougher time to learn. Agreed. And when it's too easy, you don't learn. So I've been through, like I said, my income dropped 90% moving to Toronto, still had to play the part. And while I was waiting for my license, I said I was doing research, but I also, I was taking jobs mm -hmm. and I worked on demolition crews oh, wow. and I worked anywhere where I could, you know, make some money because I had to look the part when I actually got the client. Mm -hmm. And then I actually, like, I had to, like, learn. And I met people. And some of the guys that I worked with on that demolition crew way back are some of my go-to trades now. Yeah. So it's all about that relationship building. Sure. And then th in the luxury market, they're no different. It's just different homes, different lifestyles, different, different things to consider. But at the end of the day, it's... Homes are homes, people are people. Yeah, that's the best way to look at it. Yeah, and I, I've been I agree. very, very lucky that way. And, you know, some people are maybe a little bit high maintenance, but I've had high maintenance people in all price points. Yes, me too. And the that deal, um, my, my big one a few weeks ago was almost easier than some of the other ones I've done. Yeah. So I've just, I've been fortunate. And I think that <clears throat> all that hard work and education uh, paid off in the long run. Yeah. And it's, it's attentiveness and it's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you just, you got to treat people like it's their home and treat them like they're the most important. That's, it's a level of service that I think people want. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. And uh, I, I love what you said about um, having gone through those hard times. Yes. It really molds you into who you are now. Like, like you said, a lot of these, uh, agents may be coming into this market right now and it's it's super easy the house sells itself essentially uh, yes. a lot of the cases and depending on the area um, so when I hope things don't ever take a downturn again but I hope they don't either <laughs> yeah right but if if that were to ever come I mean you know it's a big reality check for a lot of people like I got my first listing um, two days before the mortgage rules came out and for 2016 uh, 2017. Was it 2017? 2017. April 2017. Yes, you're right. Because I got my I got my license in 2016. So um, right before the rules came out, so yeah. I had the offer night set, everything good to go. I was like, yeah, perfect. And I sell this thing in, within the seven days. Was when I hold offers. Don't jinx yourself. You never jinx I yourself. I know, right? I've learned that, and I'm very big on that now too. Yes. Um, but wow, that I, I didn't end up selling it. Yep. I was holding open houses for like two months straight, every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I really got a taste for the reality of a slower market yes. early. And I'm actually so grateful that happened because um, all that work ethic I put in, I still put into this day, even yes. though the things are easy. So easier. Um, easier. Yes. yes. A lot of people think what we do is so easy yes. and they take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And I think the there's always that misconception because the market has been strong. Yeah. If if the home doesn't sell in four days or one week, there's something wrong with the agent or there's something wrong with the Definitely. home. Yeah. Sometimes it's timing 100%. and sometimes it's luck. And you know, I've been fortunate in a lot of ways. I've sold unique homes that there may not be a hundred buyers for. There may be one or two. And yeah. sometimes it's just hey, that one person has to come. But as an experienced realtor, I think what made me different is knowing and having that trust with the client. It's, you know, 
it's going to take and setting time. expectations setting expectations Huge. yeah mm -hmm. and i think now and i had great mentors when i started mm -hmm. too and be and going through longer periods of time and i still have listings where i am dumbfounded and i've learned when people say oh that's going to sell overnight i'm like no don't say that yeah, don't yes, say yes, that agreed because it it doesn't always happen mm -hmm. and it's no fault to the <clears throat> agent and no it's not and sometimes it's just it's timing yeah Unless uh, you're taking something that's super unrealistic and you're you're overpricing or yeah. you know you're not plugging away, um, yeah, it's really timing. Like if you one week can really make a difference in terms Two of what traffic comes yeah. through the door, and just having that right buyer, right? Like if you list too late, that right buyer might have just bought, and now you gotta wait for the next one. Or sometimes, so, like what I have seen too, especially in the Toronto market, is that we have a very strong spring market. Mm -hmm. It's crazy up until about April. People are getting fatigued by April, May. Yeah. And then right around May long weekend, it slows down for the summer. And I've actually had some conversations with clients. It's like, let's not bring it out in the summertime. Let's wait till the fall and it pays off. But again, it's having that confidence and it's having your be your client's best interest yes. in mind. And they, and unfortunately, realtors, we, we get always, we, a lot of times we get painted with that, you know, it's a quick sale, it's easy money, they're, they're not out for our best interest. The good agents are, mm -hmm. and we want the best for our clients. Yeah. And sometimes the quicker sale is not the best thing. And I, I, and I get criticized because sometimes I'll, I'll pull a listing, I'll bring it back out. And sometimes it's finding that sweet spot and educating. So when I have conversations with agents, like, oh, it's been on the market for a little bit longer, you don't know the backstory. Exactly. You don't know what happened. You don't know the story. So I feel like in what we do, because there's like, what, 60,000 of us in the city of Toronto. Yeah, I'd say more now, yeah. And Crazy. we need to have conversations and like, instead of um, like, let's be collaborative and work together. Huge, yeah. And I find uh, there's some realtors out there you know, they come in at, at you, they posture, they bully, and it doesn't set for a good negotiation. And no, the worst never. thing you could say to a listing agent is, yeah. you know, why isn't it selling? Well, or it's overpriced. Well, maybe there's a reason why it's priced that mm -hmm. way. And maybe it's like they're testing it. And because of the pricing strategies in Toronto vary so much, you know, you'll see some places list low, some list high, and it's a matter of maybe reaching out to that other agent. 100%. And I love when agents call and we have a conversation yeah. and sometimes it's not going to happen, but at least you've built rapport and you're not offending. So what I've seen is a big evolution with like the, the great ones will rise and then the other ones who are just in it for the money or for maybe for the wrong reasons, yeah. I hope that they kind of fade away. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah. Agreed. There's enough business for everyone out there. there we is. can all work together. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you can never have enough friends. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I cannot agree more. I pride my career on the relationships I have with other realtors. Yes. Like a lot of my clients know getting into business with me that especially in Vaughn where I'm from, there's a good chance I know the other agent. Yes. Because of all of the experience I've had and I've built with all these people and I've 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 never been the type to go at them or like try and play that that ego game. It's all the like how can I help you? What can yeah. we do? How can we meet at the middle and get this done? Like yeah. to to make both of our parties happy, right? And sometimes it doesn't happen overnight. No, sometimes never. you go back and forth. Like I had uh, a young, well, I say young agent. He's one of the best agents I've worked with this year. He he was tenacious and we got it together, but it took about a month. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm like, wow, like you were really like great to work with. Mm -hmm. And and I've been very fortunate. I get one, maybe one or two agents a year where I'm just like, oh God. Like, yeah. And then, but 99%, it's been amazing. And that's why I love what I do. Yeah. And it's not just about the clients, it's about the other realtors. And then I love seeing, you know, there's a, if I see a new agent when I see them doing well, I'm so proud of them and seeing kind of like they stuck through it and they're yeah. working and they're succeeding. So I love it. And I hope maybe they kind of think the same, like, Hey, like she was that girl working on the demolition crews and yeah. you know, like schlepping around and showing leases in the rain and stuff. So I think yeah. we need to be a bit kinder to one another and a little bit more maybe understanding or definitely. And that says a lot about you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't think that way. So, yeah. and that's the reason why you're at where you're at, you know, yes. cause that mindset, that mentality. So thank you for being like that. Thank you. Um, so as we end off here, I told you it would fly. It totally did. Um, I can talk all afternoon. <laughs> I so know. yeah. Um, I want to, so just maybe cause a lot of our demographic are younger agents yeah. or newer agents Yes. Uh, of any age really, but just starting out. So they yeah. really, uh, listen to the podcast, try and get some information or some, you know, some takeaways. So for anyone maybe looking to break into the luxury market out there, yes. uh, what, what would be a little tip of advice for them? to get started for the luxury market like i said earlier it's a matter of just your attention of service people mm -hmm. especially now they want to feel important 
and they, but just everybody does. Yeah. So there really isn't any difference, but it's education and it's offering a level of service. So most of my clients who are in the, they're busy people and they want you to make it as easy for you as possible. So like if I've had a higher end listing, anything I can do. So my tagline is always just give me the keys. I'll handle the rest. So yeah. it's very concierge. Mm -hmm. So you'll see me sometimes picking up flowers <clears throat> just to make it a little bit easier. And again, they're trusting you and you want to build that relationship. And my big thing is because I wasn't, and I'm not from Toronto, it's get out there, meet new people, like try to expand your circle and network. And you just never know. Like some of my bigger clients came from a small lease. Yeah. And you build that relationship and then it's built from there. So it, uh, it's really about not turning things down. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's take the ego out of it and learn to look, th think long term and think more and education. And yes. I'm a huge believer, you know, if you're not familiar with the market, get to know that market or if luxury is what you want to do, get to know the agents. What are they doing different? You know, maybe they had a different network and like, it didn't come overnight for me. Some agents I know are very lucky. They start doing luxury very early on. I had to work very, very hard for it. Mm -hmm. And again, put myself out there, social media, yes. networking. And so you have to expand your circle as well. And don't be discouraged. It may not happen the first few years, but hey, maybe that hard work will pay off. And Or that client that you had that started off as a lease, who knows, in a few years, it's their parents that have the luxury. Or So never, ever, ever discriminate and treat everybody they're trusting with their biggest decision. It's usually the pretty stressful. So you treat them all very well. Yeah, I love that advice. Thank you. I uh, cannot agree more. Thank you. Every door that opens, guys, take it. Not all, Don't. not everyone. Sometimes well, you have to like, you have to, uh, you know, go with your gut too. For sure, for sure. And sometimes it's luck. But it could I'm, lead anywhere. It could lead, it could yeah, lead. It's and like that's a journey like, the whole time. It's, that's it's, the it's exciting so much fun. part. Exactly, it's what makes it so much fun. And the other thing too, like with getting into the luxury market, it's again, if you start like visualizing what do luxury clients want? So start really informing yourself. Like if they're in, into cars and no garages and securities and mm -hmm. you know, the little details, you can never have enough knowledge and you can never provide enough service to, to your clients, I think. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. Well, guys, I hope you uh, got some amazing takeaways today. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. Thank Thanks for, for having me. Thank you for being you and, and, um, and bringing so much value today. Thank I think you. we'll uh, we have to have you on again one day in Look the future. Look forward to it. And uh, we're going to add all your, uh, your handles and where yes. to find you below and all of our descriptions. TikTok. I'm, I'm great on TikTok. And these we're we're going to make a new video together <laughs> yes. about yeah. everything Toronto. <laughs> Okay, guys, so I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed. Just don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you on the next season. Stay tuned. Can't wait. Cheers.